We're here in the lobby area right now, right? I'm assuming this is the area that you bring recruits in and you now have some new hardware to show them, right? Absolutely. The first thing they see when they come in the front door is our Governor's Cup trophy. And also in the same case is our Citrus Bowl trophy for our victory over Penn State on January 1st of this year. That and then, you know, kids these days are very much into gear. so. That's another one of the first things they see, right? Absolutely, so we've got several of our uniform combinations. You know, at Kentucky, we got a great partnership with Nike. We're able to kind of do some really cool stuff with the uniforms. We've got three sets of everything, so three colors of jersey, three color pants, all sorts of different helmet combinations we can roll out, so. What we've done here is kind of grabbed six, eight of those different looks to put on display for people to see as they walk in the building. And you know, we've also got a little simulator over here that you can kind of design your own look. Now, another interactive thing in this uh, lobby area is... It's a 360 display. It kind of puts you inside the helmet, essentially, of, a, of one of our players. You pick a video, so you select your video on the screen. And it kind of puts you inside the helmet now. So you have the feeling that you're walking out with the team. George, we welcome you to the Michigan football facility, the Schembechler Hall. It's just great to show off a new facility here. This was just remodeled this year. We're actually in what we call the tunnel experience here. This is where we set up our recruiting photo display. A lot of our different shoes that the kids have had an opportunity to wear. 2016, we became the first football school to incorporate the Jordan brand as part of our new Nike contract that year. We opened up a whole new world of of cleats. In the last three years, they've actually added a different cleat that became their, their game cleat for the year. We used a one this year, Jordan one, looking forward to see what we do next year. And then these are some of the PE shoes they've acquired, as well as some of the retail retros that we've used for, uh, for travel, for our international trips. There's so much blue and your yeah, iconic colors, but I want to actually take you to a shoe here, this Air Jordan right here. Tell me about that. That was a four, that was to South Africa. That was last year's shoe. We actually had the traditional 11 for Paris. Our first year we went to Rome, we just had a regular travel shoe then, and then they started incorporating the, the regular shoes. But for Paris, we used 11, and then last year, four, we went to South Africa. We ended up going to Cape Town for a few days. We were able to go up to Table Mountain. Um, we were able to go to Robben Island and Nelson Mandela's jail cell. And then we went to uh, Johannesburg, went to the Apartheid Museum, ended it with a two-day safari. <laughs> so they had all their Jordan 4s in the safari, but it was, it was a, it's a great reminder whenever you look at those shoes or wear them of some of the, some of the outstanding, awesome experiences. Uh, now, you mentioned earlier that you guys were the first Jordan football program. You know, when I started, I think they still had the Riddell, uh, yeah. <laughs> Riddell with the white shoelaces okay. and everything, some old Wilson shoes we had. You know, I mean, we were just dreaming of Nike when I started some of the places I was. And then, you know, I was fortunate in my last place, we were Nike, but then to come here and all of a sudden, by the way, I was hired, you know, we're switching to Jordan next year. It's like, wow, I had, to, I had to start studying a little bit and finding out how special this was. So we try to break it up by position. Okay. So down each one um, is a different position. And then this wall right here is all the seniors. And then up here, we have all the SEC schools that we play. And so whenever we beat them, we update it with a new picture. And then we have the outline of the Razorback right here in the LED lights. Now, as we make our way to this side of it, you guys have a pretty neat barbershop. Do you find that some of the players, when they're kind of getting their uh, beauty rest, are they doing it in the locker room or in the players' lounge? I'd say in the players' lounge. Okay. This is really probably more rowdy area. Music's always going, it's super loud. People are in and out. Now we're here in the Ackerson Theater. This is our team meeting room, as well as, you know, we have athletic department meetings. Six stripes on the side of Go Navy. So the six stripes were something that we uh, collectively got with Under Armour, and it stands for a couple things in the Navy. Six original frigates, six stripers, the highest ranking midshipman on the yard and the six original fleets in the Navy. So we, along with Under Armour, tell a story in a lot of the stuff. I mean, on the screen, you'll see there's battle print and it lists every battle that is also at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium around the walls. So we have about 230 seats. They all have flip up desks with, you know, our iconic N-Star Navy logo. What is the significance of the star for those who don't know? For those that don't know, the star is anytime you beat Army, you earn a star. So on their letter sweaters and stuff like that, every student athlete that beats Army gets a star added to it. We've kind of created it in the last 20 years or so since I've been here. Uh, Mr. Gladchuck, our athletic director, didn't like the solid end logo. We did a feasibility study with a couple people of what, what should our logo be? And we said, we're proud of it. So we're gonna make it the end star. 
Pretty good setup. You can exit his office into the stadium. This is where all of our families sit on game day. So it's a pretty unique spot in college football. So as you look along the stadium, you can see that we're completely ringed by suites, 123 suites around the stadium here. Now we were talking earlier. Tell me how the basketball facility and the football facility, they kind of co-partner in certain ways. Yeah, so as you look across the stadium there, you can see those top row of windows above the Jumbotron. That's the only skybox that I know of in the country that is for both basketball and football. So if you're sitting in the seats on this side, you're at the football game. If you're sitting on the seats on the other side, you're looking into Gallagher Iva to the basketball game. Really unique place to be and watch a game. I hear a lot about this east-west, north-south configuration. Uh, tell me about that. Well, most stadiums run north and south, which would be running across our 50 yard line. This is an east and west stadium and uh, there are not many in the country. So when you hear football coaches forever say, hit that thing running north, you'd be running out of bounds here. I'm gonna just let you guys know before we start this, this is the biggest, craziest player lounge area we've ever seen. Yeah, we got anything from shuffleboard, pool tables, air hockey, recording studio. Tell me about this, because this, this made all kind of noise on social media when you guys opened this place. Yeah, this is a Darius Rucker recording studio. The players and other people just come in and hang out and try to make their own music and they're actually just having a good time. So that's basically what it was meant to be for. Right, now do they spend more time in here than any other place in this player lounge? Yeah, they probably spend the most time in, in the recording studio. Now tell me a little bit about Darius Rucker and why this uh, recording studio is named after him. Well, he, he went to school here and then Hootie and the Blowfish got that started here. and. He's just a big, you know, supporter of the, of the program. Now, on to everything. You mentioned the shuffleboard, the pool table. What else can we find in here? Ping pong tables, video games, Xbox, PlayStation, air hockey. Then you got arcade games over here. You got Golden Tee, Papa Shot, Pac-Man, and car racing, where you can actually compete against each other. It gets a little competitive in here with the uh, Papa Shot and Golden Tee and things like that. This is not actually your film room, right? No, this is not like a team meeting room or film room or anything. This is just where if they want to watch a movie, they can put it on and it projects on the screen or if they want to watch a ball game, come in, watch it, basically just kind of hang out. This is incredible. When I saw this, I was kind of blown away. So this is actually an interactive table where you can look at the history of every sport of Stanford so that when people do come in here, it's open to the public and come whenever they want. Come over here, grab a book, say, oh, my grandfather played here in such and such a year. Put it down here and you can look through and scroll and find by sport and year all the players that were here that were letter winners that played at Stanford. Now we're in the uh, Stanford Athletics Hall of Fame or the Hall of Champions. It houses so much of our history and so much of our success. And really what we have down here immediately in the middle is, is our yearly success uh, of all of our sports. But we also have some space dedicated to two most prominent coaches in sports. So this is our football area, the David Shaw era and everything Coach Shaw has done since he has gotten here. Two Rose Bowl wins, three Pac-12 championships and everything that he's built here that all that his players have built and his program has built and what we've become today. Um, it's important to remember all this stuff and, and celebrate it. At the top of the steps is the trophy that athletic departments really would like to have. Yeah. And we have 24 of them. This is the Director's Cup. It's handed out yearly to the best uh, athletic department in the country. All right, Rick, this might be one of the most flexible player lounges I've been in. Like, you have everything. I really like this space because it's where fun meets functionality. You know, we had our players meet directly with our architects. And we said, guys, tell them what you want. Um, obviously, they wanted the typical gaming systems, papa shots, pool table, ping pong. Uh, but we said, what do you need to be successful? Um, and they said, we need a sleep room. Uh, so they got a room filled with sleep pods where they can get a 20 minute nap. Um, that's so important. Uh, there's a strong correlation between lack of sleep and student athlete injuries. So we wanna make sure when they get a little bit of downtime, they can make the most of it. Uh, we got an active recovery room for them. Uh, put in these really nice aqua massage chairs for them. Uh, we'd heard they would like them. Uh, they like them way more than we had heard. Uh, they've been a big hit. And then they've got a great academic support center, you know, only 120 yards away. Uh, but sometimes they've got 15, 20 minutes between meetings to work on a paper or turn something in. Uh, so we created a study lounge for them right here uh, in the football center. Uh, we gave them a virtual reality room. Uh, still trying to tweak with that and figure out what that's for. Uh, they've enjoyed it. Uh, we created a barber shop for them. Uh, that way the guys, instead of having to take an hour and a half out of the day to go get their hair cut, they can pop in and out of here in 10 minutes. And then because of NIL, we wanted to make sure they had some new tools uh, to really help them with their branding, help them with their communication skills, 
uh, and help them develop skills that are going to uh, serve them long after they're done playing football. So we created a, uh, an audio podcasting room, which can also be a video podcasting room, and it's connected to a video editing suite. So you really got everything you would have almost in a TV studio right there. So right now we're in the lobby of the Bright Football Complex. This is open like Monday through Thursday during the season. This basically tells you everything about all uniforms. The tech info goes to the helmet, tells you about the helmet, what it does. It goes in full detail of every single item we have that we give to the players and when they suit up on game days. Compression chops all the way down the cleats, customizable armbands and socks. And then when you go to customize, this is the cool part for like little kids and anybody of all ages, man. You can put your name in there, number, and you can choose all the different alternate helmets we have. You can do the iced out and it goes right to it. You can email it to yourself and then you can share it on any social media outlet, kind of see what your name will look like in the back of the, on a 12th man jersey or any number jersey or any style. Now we go over to the legends of A&M and the trophies that they have earned. Got the Lombardi trophy from that win in 98, or it goes by the year. Of course, the famous 2012 season with Johnny Manziel, got a couple trophies. And then when Trevor Knight transferred from Oklahoma, he got the self-service award. Our recent winner, the Ray Guy Award, presented to Braden Mann for the best punter in the nation. Johnny actually has his Heisman up here, which every Heisman winner gets one for themselves and one for the school. We actually have two Heisman winners. Not too many new Ags know about John David Crow, but a lot of old Ags do, you know. Go to the Johnny Manziel Shrine, shows all his highlights. As a better, you demand perfection, and my bookie delivers. NFL, college football, and a brand new cash out system give you options to bet and win all season long. First two legs of your parlay hit, cash out early and place another bet, or let it ride for a chance at a bigger payday. Join the MyBookie family for an entire season filled with daily odds boosts, same game parlays, and super contests. This season, MyBookie has a no strings attached cash bonus. It lets you deposit and withdraw quick. Use promo code Korski on a deposit of $50 or more and you can receive up to $200 in cash instantly to your MyBookie account. Bet your deposit amount once and you're ready to withdraw at any time. Again, that's promo code Koisky to claim your cash deposit bonus. You can bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with MyBookie. All right, I wanted to bring you into the heart of the facility here. This is the outside of the Grand Lobby. We've got our Jordan branding up here. So let's go in and take a look at the trophies and everything. Let's talk a little swag here. Um, so back in the day, Joe Washington painted his shoes silver um, yeah. just to kind of stand out a little bit. Ryan Broyles broke the NCAA receiving record, and that was his uniform that he wore there. These are all of our national award winners. We have the most in the country. You can come over here. You can touch screen. Great All-American players here. See videos of them. Got our jump man in here. That infinity pattern I talked about. You can come in and check out our current players in the NFL. Be part of the Heisman's the actual Heisman's. And behind here, we've got our rings displayed. A few of our bowl championship trophies. Here's our seven national championship trophies and all of our big 12 championship trophies. We can come in and take a selfie. Boom, there's our photo. Wow. Next, you can pick a filter. I kind of like the OU times Jordan. Yeah, let's do that. Hit your phone number. Mm -hmm. Should be on your phone in the next three to four seconds. Now, Jordan, I know this whole renovation was $10 million, and one of the awesome parts of it is the locker room. The lockers, to be exact. Tell us what's inside of here and what it looks like. Sure. So, Longhorn Lockers, a company out of Dallas, did these for us, and they've got these doors that open, they pocket for us. So, coach likes them closed for recruiting purposes so that they can kind of clean up and, and stay recruit ready at all times. But uh, when you get it open here, we've got the helmet rack with the shoulder pads, and this tray pulls out so you can have some easy access to it. I see these glove racks here. You can put shoes up here. On the helmet rack here, they've got this air vent that kind of keeps the helmets dry. And then we got these drawers here for just different things. Some hanging space, and they've got their own personal lock box here that's got charging outlets if they want to charge their iPads or phones or anything like that. We'll have a bunch of cleats, lifting shoes. Um, this underneath seat is kind of the space for that, obviously. And the way this locker is, is created, is it easy for you guys on the equipment staff to kind of just, you know, clean it up? Yeah, it is. It's not too bad. And we can throw stuff in different compartments, shut the doors, and it looks recruit ready at all times. 
All right, Abir, Coach Davis told me that the weight room was like the crown jewel of this facility, but I'm starting to think this area is. Like, I don't see this in, in many uh, facilities, a recruiting suite. This is our bread and butter. So this has this beautiful view of our stadium. It's where we bring people up to meet with Coach Loxley. But this is a special place just for recruits to get to know what it's like to be a player on our team. So as you can see here, we have all the gear that they'll get during their time at Maryland. This is their casual wear. So when you see them roaming around campus, this is what they're wearing. These are all the shoes that they're getting with us with the best Under Armour gear and put them on the road. And over here we have game day more casual with polos, their sweatsuits, but what they're really looking for is the gloves and the cleats and they want to know what they look like on game day. Definitely. And you guys benefit from having an amazing uh, relationship with Under Armour, right? Yes. They're in your backyard. You guys have a lot of apparel and gear that comes through this uh, facility. Do you recognize that it's like not normal? Absolutely. So I was a former student, I worked with a team and I had duffel bags and duffel bags of clothes. So for me, having that relationship and partnership with Under Armour, it's unique to us. We have the opportunity to test products out before they get here. We are definitely protecting our house here and building the brand for Under Armour as well. You come in here and you're getting recruited by the University of Maryland. Our big saying here is the best is ahead. So all the opportunities that you're looking for are right here at the College Park. So for you guys, the best is ahead. And this is our throne room. This is where you come in, you get suited and booted and put you in the throne and we'll get you the flag. And as you guys can see, it's part of everything that we do and you just drape one of these on. We're in the locker room right now, state of the art locker room. You can see the stone on the wall, kind of has like that cabin home feel. And we put the doors on the lockers, make it clean, flush look. And we have ventilation running throughout the locker room nonstop. One thing we did add is the logo of Ralphie in the ceiling rather than doing it on the ground so we don't have to rope it off and people aren't stepping on her. Uh, we put it up there, it's just respect, so. When the team gets here on game day, whatever we're wearing that day, we'll have it set out for them. We have it right now with our traditional home uniform, gold helmet, black jersey, gold pants, and then whatever cleat they wear, their gloves, their compression shirt, and socks, we'll have it laid out real nice for them. Hopefully our man George right here will try on a jersey and a helmet for us, take a couple pictures. Definitely, I'm not putting the pants on this time. That's perfectly fine. I think the lounge is kind of like where they get away and they can shut this door and, and it's really off limits to everybody except for the players. So this is really their haven. You know, we have two stations right here where they can play the Xbox, Playstations, and all the other gaming systems. We have our, our traditional ping pong. We got pool, we got foosball. During the season, we usually have a couple pinball machines right here. Everybody loves to have a game of pop and shot. So we got the pop and shot. And then once again, we're always stacking it with water, Gatorade food. And I think the highlight of the whole deal is the bowling alley. The training camp, you can get some competition, some receivers versus DBs. We'll take it from the field and bring it to the bowling alley and see who can get the most strikes and stuff. I think this space right here really gives them a true sense of withdrawing from football, decompressing, and just having some just normal fun without without the confines of the coaches and stuff like that. So this is kind of like their, their safe haven where they'll come and relax and really let their hair down and kind of get away from football for a little bit. All right, Lewis, obviously this locker room is different, unique compared to any other locker room in the country, but from the naked eye, what makes this locker just the individual ones, what makes it different? You see it in its, uh, its sitting up position, right? Um, guys can come in, we usually keep the lights low during the day, and then they can come in here, take this backrest, bring it down, put it here, pull out a pillow, and catch a nap. Goodness gracious. And then you guys have the chargers. Yeah, chargers form, chargers up top in the lockbox as well, so they can put phones up there and charge them. Or if they're down below, they can be, do it there. Now this locker room doesn't smell like a locker room. Right. At all. The bottoms of the lockers where you keep your cleats and things like that, it has exhaust air out. Um, we're always pumping fresh air in. And then we have a separate room that we keep shoulder pads in that does the same as well. Give me the backstory of this place. I know when the design firm came to you guys and was like, hey, you know, you guys wanted something different. Um, how did it come to be this? Yeah, so originally it was, we wanted to make a sleeping room or an area for them to rest and things like that. And realistically, how many guys are you gonna put in a room to sleep, right? So we kind of turned towards what would be kind of almost like an airline look, right? The front of the big planes and fit it to be for a football player size. All the lockers do this and everybody can sleep in here at one time if we really needed to, but it's this place for them to rest during the day. It's a busy day in college athletics. So if you need to catch a quick 20, you can come in here and do it real quick. We're standing here in the lobby of Waltos Performance Center. 
from the outside looking in, you see the brick, the traditional Auburn brick, but when you walk in here, it's super modern. We really wanted to do something that blended in well with the rest of the university. And so that's why we have, you know, very traditional brick, precast, things like that. But on the inside here, we really wanted to be as innovative as possible, use a lot of technology, have our staple orange, blue. We really wanted to activate this space and we wanted to do it in a way using video boards where we could really change out our message, change out the images, social media is over here. If we want to communicate our brand in any different way, celebrate a big win or a recent win, anything like that. It's a little overwhelming, but that's kind of what we want. All right, so this might be like my favorite spot. Man, I'm telling you. That's why you say this for last, huh? That's why we saved it for last, Say the best for last. This is the um, outdoor amenity pool area. That is open to all student athletes. You see, we have TVs out here, pool here, and then we also have the spa that is a hot tub as well. We have everything you need um, in this space to kind of relax and kind of take your mind off of class or school or playing ball, etc. And then also, speaking of playing ball, we have the half court. You hooped, right? So if anybody want to get busy, you yeah. know, we can, we can go there. You ain't got there. no game, though. It's Relax. Done. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> so, yeah, we got the half court, a uh, basketball court over there. Uh, we got the fire pit over there as well. It's just a really nice space for the student athletes to just come out of here, congregate, um, get to know each other. Just kind of relax and have a good time. I just we were in the locker room. Very impressive, by the way. This Thank may be you. one of the best locker rooms I've, me personally, I've been in. What's the favorite kind of quality or aspect of the, of the locker room for the player and for you? For me, it's how efficient the locker room is for us and the setup of the locker. For what we're trying to do with the equipment to have a lot of storage space to put shoulder pads, cleats, apparel for the players, along with the space that is just private to them. The way that it's set up, it's kind of like a pod. So it's a, a private area for them with a comfortable anti-gravity chair for them to sit in. If you ask them, little things matter, you know? So there's a wireless cell phone charger in it. That was probably the biggest thing when, when we moved in here last year, was they were excited to have a wireless cell phone charger. So to have something where they can come in, just set it down on their locker, and they can let it charge during practice and not have to worry about a plug or anything. But overall, the players have liked it. They love having the chair. They love how it's personalized to them with their nameplate. It's got their headshot, their hometown, picture of the state that they're from. So just having it personalized for them is something they've really enjoyed. Okay, Tanner, is this like the crown jewel of the facility? We had the indoor facility had already been built. So when we built this facility, this was the focal point. Basically all the architecture and all of the symmetry of everything comes off of this center room. The equipment room is down below us with the locker room space, training room off to the side, the coaches' offices are above us on that side, and all the support staff offices on the other. So this is really the main hub of the entire operations. How important, especially in a three-story building, was this to kind of stand alone uh, and not be, cause you know, when they're pounding and, and hitting the ground, like you don't want, you know, the interruption of, of a workflow. So how important was that? So it's really built for that specific purpose. Um, you know, we call the equipment room below the bunker because it, when you're underneath it, you see how much structure is built beneath it to support this space. But this really is, its own independent building. The weight room, equipment room stack, the office training room and locker room are all in a stack together and then the other support spaces on that side. So this operates as much vibration, sound, anything we can get into it, it kind of insulates it in this specific space. So the scoreboard that we put in, it's always challenging the norm. So why just a screen? Why don't we put an arena size video board inside our weight room? We can divide it up to a bunch of different things. We can put TV on it, but they put their work Workouts on there. They watch a pre-lift hype videos on there. It also really helps when we have recruits in here and we can show a recruiting presentation in that space as well. You know, process design in this building. We got to fly around on Mr. Knight's jet and look at all the places around the country to generate some ideas and kind of come up with what we thought would be the, the best equipment room in the nation. Now, Kenny, everyone loves sneakers, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone loves sneakers and, and I'm seeing a wall of 
will be a lot of people's holy grails. <laughs> I like to tell people, you know, our relationship with Nike is second to none. You know, a lot of people refer to this place as Nike University. We're blessed to, you know, have them gift us with, with some shoes and take care of our athletes with some heat. The first kind of SMU retro that we did was a 2010 season and we did that Black Nine. Now, yeah. Kenny, how have you seen recruiting actually strengthen from this initiative? Guys come in so educated about this stuff. Social media has been a big you know, player in that, and you know, it really is exclusive. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things that, you know, when guys come in here, they're like, oh, I've, se I've seen pictures of these, or I know a guy that had a pair of these. You know, that obviously is just another feather in our cap that, you know, yeah. you come to a place like Oregon and you're taking advantage of being, you know, number one school for Nike. These logos at the top. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about this. So when they were designing the fitting room, which is, you know, all big thanks to, you know, a couple of people. So I know Gallagher Design had a big part in designing this stuff. And, and obviously our friends at Nike, you know, each one of these is our mascot, the duck, just kind of roughing up, you know, all the other teams in our conference and <laughs> their mascots. What is this chair? What is this throne? Uh, so this throne, <laughs> really, it's in honor of Phil and Penny Knight, who obviously the generosity to this program and this university is you know, unbelievable as far as things they've donated to athletic facilities and campus buildings. So this is our helmet room. Obviously in here, this is where we're putting together and building all the helmets. Sometimes we're working on things that are kind of top secret or we gotta work kind of ahead of everybody to make sure it's ready to go. So we don't want people to see. So we have the ability if we need to, because there's so much glass around here that we can, can fog the glass out and make sure that people can't see in here. This is kind of like an archives of cool helmets we've done over the years. They're all enclosed behind this glass, so we can't really get to them, but just to kind of showcase some of, the, some of the cool stuff we've done. What has been your favorite helmet uh, over the years? You know, I started in school here in way back, so my personal favorite is our throwback helmet, because that's how it looked when I first started here. So <laughs> most of the stuff is started with recommendations from players, things that they wanted to see or colors they wanted to introduce or hey let's do some kind of a bca game a breast cancer awareness game all right and then leave it to the people up up in beaverton and they'll come out with a full you know kind of neon pink helmet mm -hmm. and with glitter in it you know it's just <laughs> taking it to that next level getting to see it from the ground floor all the way up it's really an amazing deal to watch <laughs>